This week on Theme Park Bar, we're taking things to the West Coast for a quick visit to Disney's California Adventure. We're going to stroll right down Buena Vista Street to visit the ever so swanky Carthay Circle for one of the absolutely delicious Tequila Daisies. Hello, my name is Matt and welcome to Theme Park Bar. I am a career bartender and an Orlando native who wants to show you how to make the best signature drinks from around the world and across the universe. Here at Theme Park Bar, we know the best attractions are the ones served in a glass. Hey, first and foremost, happy belated birthday, happy 20th birthday, Disney's California Adventure. You know, the little park that everyone liked to pick on and kick on all the time, it did it. You made it 20 years. Almost old enough to enjoy a cocktail here on the show. We'll see you next year, buddy. Disney's California Adventure is honestly one of my favorite theme parks, and it's one I spent way more time than anticipated the last time I went to Disneyland Resort. DCA 1.0 does seem like a fever dream, and I really wish I got to experience it, but I am lucky enough to say I got to ride Heimlich's Choo Choo Train once. Candy corn! DCA as it stands now is absolutely iconic, and it's one I spent way more time than I anticipated the last time I went to the Disneyland Resort. From Cars Land, to the World of Color, to Buena Vista Street, which I think a lot of people sleep on for being so iconic of a park entrance. It's absolutely beautiful. For those of you who don't know, the original Carthay Circle was the theater that Walt Disney debuted Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in back in 1937. It's a true icon of the golden age of Hollywood that was sadly tore down in 1969. When the Walt Disney Company wanted to revamp California Adventure from being a fever dream of Michael Eisner to being a celebration of the golden era of Hollywood, they knew they needed a new winning, and that's where the Carthay Circle restaurant came to be. Made to look exactly as it did in 1937, the Disney Imagineers spared no expense covering every nook and cranny and make sure they got everything as accurate as possible. When I got to go to the restaurant, I was very fortunate enough to receive a tour and was taken around every nook and cranny of the lounge and every single dining room. It was explained to me that they went as far as finding the textile company that made the carpets of the original Carthay to get everything just as it was back then. Having a restaurant and bar themed in the 1930s does present that fun challenge of what all can you put on that signature cocktail menu? At least that's the first thing I think of. You gotta remember in 1937, we're just coming off the heels of Prohibition, but we haven't quite had the explosion of tiki drinks from post-World War II life. Prohibition time was a wild time in America, and it was really hard to get stuff like bourbon, whiskey, gin, vodka, but it was incredibly easy to get your tequila, and that's what brings us to this week's drink, the Tequila Daisy. The Tequila Daisy is going to be kind of an updated twist with some refined elegance of the classic margarita with a surprise ingredient or two in there for you. Here's what you're going to need. One and a half ounces of tequila, half an ounce of Cointreau, one ounce of fresh lime juice, half an ounce of agave, one egg white, and a splash of violet liqueur. Violet liqueur is going to be pretty straightforward. It is going to be a liqueur that is made using violets, little purple flowers. Today I'm using creme de violet, which is essentially just violet flowers steeped in brandy. Brandy is a liquor based on grapes. It's made kind of like a fortified wine. So this is going to have a nice little fruity, very floral forward flavors. Over at Disney's California Adventure, they're using creme yvette, which is a little more nuanced. It's a little harder to get your hands on and it's a touch more expensive too. Creme de Violet is going to work perfectly in this cocktail. The differences in flavors are very subtle and nuanced and it really comes down to the technicalities more than anything else. You're not going to be able to taste the difference in this type of use of this liquor, so Creme de Violet is perfectly fine. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get working on the Tequila Daisy here. I'm going to change things up I mean, ever so slightly. Whenever I make a drink here, I'm typically using a pint glass as my mixer, mostly so you guys on the camera can, can see what's going on. Today I'm going to be using the, uh, the old double tin method. When you buy a Boston shaker, which is the style tin I use, it should become with a, a little more, a smaller, more accompanying feller. This creates a actually a tighter seal than the pint glass method that I typically use does. And uh, you know, it's just the more uh, correct way, I guess, of doing things. The pint glass method that I use is 100% okay. It's what you're gonna find most professionals are using in the industry. But for a drink like this, you're gonna want the, make sure the seal is extra tight. We'll get to why here in a moment. So, instead of your glass, get your mixing tin and fill her up with ice. 
We're going to start off with an ounce and a half of our Reposado tequila. Tequila is going to be kind of that mid-range of aging of tequila. You have your Blanco, which is going to be your silver or clear tequilas, or your Anejo, which is going to be darker, uh, richer in color, and much more of that oaky barrel flavor. Reposado is right in the middle. It still has that snap that you get with a Blanco with some of that smooth uh, smokiness that you get in the Anejo. This is going to be aged for only two months to like a year, so it's like just a slight kiss of oak going on there. Anyways, an ounce and a half of our Reposado tequila. After that, we're doing half an ounce of Cointreau. Cointreau is an orange liqueur, similar to Curacao. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're using Cointreau for this one. It's such a nice product. I normally say you can throw in triple sec, but use the good stuff. This is a fancy drink. Use your fancy liqueurs. From there, we have one ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of agave, and if you stop right here, you have yourself a traditional margarita. Actually, Daisy, translated to Spanish, is margarita. So, Disney is serving guys up a uh, tequila margarita. What else do you make a margarita with? All right, now we're gonna change things up a little bit though. We're gonna throw in some egg white. That's right, we are putting raw egg whites in this drink. I separate the egg whites myself here in on the bar, but you can use eggs out of a carton. That is 100% what they are using at Disney. It's what they're gonna be using at any bar you probably go to. Egg whites in the carton are gonna be pasteurized, which means all the germs, all the salmonella, all that good stuff has been killed out. You never should eat raw or undercooked eggs. You do run the risk of getting sick, so I only have myself to blame if I have a bad night after sipping this drink. Do as I say, not as I do. I know some of y'all are going to be freaking out that there are egg whites in here. Trust me, this is a thing that has been around for as long as bartending has been a thing. As long as cocktails has been a thing, people have been putting egg whites in there. This is going to create a nice, frothy, really foamy texture for the drink. From there, get together half of your tin. Seal it up, and actually, before I shake, some cocktail purists out there, I'm probably gonna hit up the comments. Before you do, traditionally, when you do make a drink with egg whites in there, you wanna do something called a dry shake, which means you're shaking the drink without any ice in there. That helps make the egg whites get extra foamy, extra frothy, give you a nice, you know, like stiff peaks if you're making them right. This is how Disney does it at California Adventure. This is how they do it at Carthay Circle. I'm recreating the drink from the restaurant, so I'm gonna use the restaurant's techniques. If you wanna do a dry shake, do it. It's probably gonna make the drink even better, but we're doing it the Disney way, cause theme park bar, baby. So let's shake this boy. Pull up our serving glass, it's going to be using a traditional coupe. We're going to strain it right into that glass. Oh man, that is looking pretty dang good already. Now for our last ingredient, we're going to throw in what they call a splash of our violet liqueur. Uh, I think it's going to be anywhere between like a quarter of an ounce and like a third of an ounce. Just pour it in there. Just like that. We just grab our garnish here over at Carthay Circle. They have these beautiful sugared violet flowers. I uh, I don't have those, so I made myself just these little flower lemon wheels with everyone's favorite fancy daddy cherry. Kind of, you know, looks a little bit like a violet. I think it's pretty dang pretty myself, but anyways. And there we go, guys, from the fanciest bar in all of Disneyland. Hell, I'm gonna say it's the fanciest theme park bar there is in general. The Tequila Daisy from Carthay Circle. Your traditional margarita ingredients that have been spruced up a bit with that egg white foam and that creme de violet. That's gonna give this a taste. Oh, my, my garnish isn't balancing so well. All right, give it a sip. Ooh, that creme de violet right up front right up front very floral very very fruity it's funny creme de violet a little bit a little bit goes a very long way if you do a shot of this stuff it probably tastes like perfume but but that quarter of an ounce or so that we put in the essentially traditional margarita really comes forward this is this is very nice this is very nice this is perfect for a hot day a hot afternoon a hot night anytime anything's hot this is a great cocktail 
This is an awesome elevation of a classic. You got the Reposado tequila, which you do kind of get kind of at the end. It gets that slight smoke. You feel it in the, uh, the chest. This tequila really warms you up going down, you know. Of course, you get a little bit of the citrus from Cointreau, but the real star of the show is that creme de violet, that violet liqueur. This is a great elevation of a classic cocktail. This feels and, and, and tastes like old rich Hollywood money, which I guess is kind of what Carthay Circle is going for. You know, the glam and glitz of 1930s Hollywood. This is a great cocktail for Dapper Day. You know, if you're looking for getting the mood for Dapper Days or getting up and putting on your bow ties or whatever, actually every day is Dapper Day at Carthay Circle. If you haven't been there, all the servers, they got vests and they got bow ties. It's really, it's really swanky. It's a really swanky place in the middle of a theme park. Of the Tequila Daisy, this is a cocktail you definitely want to add to your repertoire. This is a nice drink to bust out to impress your friends and not having to do a whole crazy lot. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in this week to Theme Park Bar to help me recreate the Tequila Daisy from Carthay Circle, one of my absolute favorite restaurants and lounges in the entire theme park game. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode and you're new here, hit the subscribe button and you become one of the bar regulars and you'll never miss a single sip of anything else we're serving here for you. You can chat with me all over the internet, down in those YouTube comments, or all over social media at Theme Park Bar, Twitter, and Instagram. You can support the show by following the links to pick up some awesome merch like these coasters or a beautiful t-shirt, or you can even go to patreon.com slash theme park bar to help keep the lights on and keep this bar fully stocked. Remember when you're going out, make sure you're always being safe, you drink responsibly, and you never forget to tip your bartenders. Now, we're going to make another one of these, head to my couch, and watch World of Color, and maybe cry just a little bit. Till next time, y'all.